2019 was a terrible year for diseases in soybeans. We've spent a lot of time talking about sclerotinia, white mold, sudden death syndrome, and a few other diseases, but today we want to get to some of the less common ones. Darren has spent a lot of time out in soybean fields here in the last few years. So Darren, I'm just going to quiz you quick. Let's start with Phomopsis. All right, first of all, I haven't just spent time in soybean fields the last few years. I've spent time in soybean fields my whole life. And oftentimes you see throughout the season different stages of some of these diseases we're going to talk about. So when you talk about that whole diaporth family of diseases, Phomopsis being part of that, I think of pod and stem blight. Now, there's a couple different things here because you can see late in the season when you have warm and wet conditions, more disease pop up on soybean plants, especially during reproduction, and then as they get to the end of the year and they start to senesce. With this particular one, pot and stem blight, we see the stem blight portion having little black specks that happen in lines up and down the stems and out onto the pods. Now it often gets confused with anthracnose and other diseases. With anthracnose, this is one we saw a lot of in 2019 black blotches on the stems. And this is another one of those conditions where we get moisture late in the season that we're gonna see more anthracnose. When it comes to pod and stem blight and phomopsis, yes, seed treatment can help a little bit, but mainly what we're really after is fungicide use later on in the year. I would suggest starting at R1 and spraying every two to three weeks until pretty late in the season, even up to R5, maybe even early R6. You know, with anthracnose, there just isn't anything that's really good on anthracnose. So we look at varietal tolerance, but again, this is one of those things that generally pops up so late in the season, we don't see a big impact on yield. If it does pop up earlier though, it certainly can reduce your yield in your fields. All right, let's talk about brown stem rot. Where do you see it most commonly? How do you get it under control? Brown stem rot is more common in the north, so we normally see this in the northern corn belt. Now, brown stem rot looks a lot like sudden death syndrome when it expresses foliar symptomology, but inside that stem, we're gonna see a brown pith. So that's really the way that you know you've got brown stem rot rather than SDS. It likes cool and wet conditions. Okay, the other thing with brown stem rot, I would just strongly encourage you try to pick tolerant varieties if you've got a lot of issue there. Well, there are resistant varieties too for brown stem rot. So this is one that you can actually completely negate out in your field by picking the right variety. All right, let's get to charcoal root rot. What do you think there? You know, charcoal root rot is one that can be pretty much anywhere. And what we'll see is down towards the lower part of the stem, we'll see some little hard black sclerotia that kind of look like that little black speckling. When you scrape off the outer layer of skin on the soybean stem, you'll often see a charcoal color. And this is a disease that likes hot and dry. So it's a little bit different than some of the other diseases. And it's more common when you have cyst nematode problems. And also it's more common when you have heavy soybean aphid pressure. At least that's been my observation. Right, so try to raise a good, healthy crop, and usually you have a lot less charcoal root rot. All right, let's get to Cercospora. Well, Cercospora is one that, that we see as well. A lot of times you'll see kind of a leathery appearance on soybean leaves. This is one that fungicides can really help us on, but just like in sugar beets and other crops that have been fighting Cercospora, we've got to use multiple effective modes of action if we want to do the best job controlling this particular disease. And also rotation, crop rotation helps uh, because we see this over winter in the residue, just like most of the other diseases that we've talked about. All right, the last one I've got is not a fungal disease, so fungicides won't control it. It's tobacco ring spot virus. We saw this again in 2019, and we pretty much see it every year, where you see just one green plant out in the field here and there. And we'll see it oftentimes mature so much later, it'll have a lot of pods in many cases, but they just never make seed. Uh, this is caused by some sort of vector, whether it's a thrip or something moving that from plant to plant out in the field or from field to field haven't ever seen this be such a big problem that it caused any issues in the field. Yeah, so again, we're talking about good insect control, and then you'll have fewer diseases in the field. Well, again, this is just a basic summary on a few of the less common soybean diseases we saw this last year. Do everything you can to raise a healthy crop. In most cases, 
use good seed treatment, and spray some fungicide later in the year, and you should see a lot less of these diseases. And for more information on all of these diseases and more, just download the free Ag PhD Soybean Diseases app that we put together with the American Phytopathological Society. Great information, great pictures, uh, and a lot more details too. Well, we've talked a lot about disease control, but we're gonna get to weed control later in the show. Can you identify this week's weed?